Hey, Flipped Geometry, how you doing? We are getting ready to jump into the next chapter. Here we are, chapter seven, moving into area. So we've been doing a lot of proofs with this thing is congruent to this thing and lots of segments and angles. And for a moment, you get a break from that. Just for a moment, don't get too excited. We'll get back to it. But for a while, we're gonna be talking about area now, which should, I hope, be a little bit more comfortable. So with that little bit of a prelude, let's get right into it. Let's define what area is. Area is, uh, is a, a way of saying how many squares would you need to cover this thing? Um, so the area of a region is the number of square units needed to cover it completely. And we always use square units, even if the thing is wonky shaped, because we can, we can cut round pieces and put them somewhere else and in our mind imagine, essentially imagine like tiling it, like a tile floor. How many pieces of tile do you need to cover this room? Even if the room is curvy and strange shaped, you, this tile still come in squares. And so we have to see how many tiles would you need to cover this floor, okay? So area is always in square units and it's how many of those square units we need to cover a, a region, usually a polygon in what we're gonna be doing. Um, and so it's square units of any size. They could be square inches, square meters, square miles, square well, kilometers, square centimeters, square anything. But there's always a square with a certain dimension on the side of the square. Okay, that's area. So how do you use the concept of area? An area postulate says that every region has an area given by a unique positive real number. You can't have a negative area. Think about that. What room would you have to take tiles out of in order to put tiles down on the floor? That doesn't make sense. Every area is positive. Um, it's a real number. It's not some imaginary, if you, you know, it's some abstract thought. No, there's, there's a real number of tiles you would need to tile every room. Um, and so the area of something is a real uh, positive number. It might be a decimal, it might be a fraction, but it, um, it is at least a real positive number. The uh, simplest kind of um, shape to try to cover with tiles would be a square shape, right? If you have square tiles, square shape, well, that's easy. And the same thing is true when you start calculating the area of polygons. The easiest polygon to calculate the area of is a square. Its dimensions are the same on all sides. And so if you take the dimension of one of those sides and square it, <laughs> multiply it by itself, you will discover the area of that shape. So a square is, the area of a square is just the square of its side length. If a, if a square is three feet on a side, then three squared, it's nine square feet, okay? Um, so that's the simplest one. We'll move on to a little bit more challenging things next. Sometimes as you're calculating the area of something, it isn't a simple shape. If it's something weird like the, the uh, diagram that I found and put up here on this slide where it's bigger in one part than it is in another. You can't just say, oh, it's so many units by so many units. You might have to cut the thing up into usable uh, regions. And then you would just get the area of all these regions that you can handle and add them up to get the area of the irregular polygon that we're dealing with. So in this particular example here, um, if you have something that has an area of 15 and something that has an area of 10 and they are adjoining and you want the area of the whole thing, you can add the 15 and the 10 and get 25. Even though there's no way to just multiply height times width or something like that for that strange shape and get the answer, if you cut it up into smaller regions, you can add those areas back up together and get the area of the whole thing. So the area addition postulate is that if the inter interiors of two regions do not intersect, then the area of their union is the sum of their areas. The, the picture is clearer than the words. What they're saying is that this bigger thing that has an area of 15 does not overlap at all with the thing that has the area of 10. And so you can just add the 15 and the 10 together and get the area of the whole thing. If they overlapped, you'd have to like subtract out the overlap and that gets more confusing. But area addition, if you have two things, you can add them together and get the area of their union of the two of them together. This next idea is pretty straightforward. If you have two things that you've demonstrated are congruent, two congruent regions, uh, probably because they're two congruent polygons, two congruent triangles, congruent quadrilaterals, and you find the area of one of them, well, the other one has the same area because it's the same sort of thing, right? 
uh, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. You find that the area of triangle ABC is 12 square inches. Then triangle DEF is also 12 square inches because they're congruent triangles. Remember that the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That also applies to their area. That now you're looking at the area of the region inside the triangle. It's congruent to its corresponding region inside another congruent triangle, right? So congruent regions have congruent area. Pretty straightforward. We've looked at the um, how to calculate the area of a square. How to calculate the area of a rectangle is almost as easy. You just take the base times the height. Um, so a square is a side length squared, which is essentially the same thing. Base times height, it's just that these two things are the same. So you're multiplying the number by itself. In a, in a rectangle, they're not the same, or at least they're not necessarily the same. And so you have to actually get the, the measure of the base and the measure of the height and multiply them together to get the area. So here's a figure that helps us with the last two slides. It's a rectangle, first of all. So we can calculate its area by just saying 40 times 80, right? It's 80 feet across the bottom and 40 feet high. 40 times 80 is 3,200. So 40 feet by 80 feet, 3,200 square feet. That's the area of this rectangle. But if we were to draw a little dotted line through the middle of this rectangle, we would discover that it's made up of two congruent squares that are 40 feet by 40 feet. And so we could also demonstrate here that 40 feet by 40 feet, 1,600 square feet, that, that square AEFD is congruent to square EBCF, and um, therefore they have congruent areas. And you could see that visually here. Okay, let's move on. So uh, the area of a rectangle is base times height. The area of a parallelogram is also base times height. And at first, you're like, wait a minute, but the rectangle has been pushed over sl uh, slantwise. How is it the same area? No, it's not the same area because its height has changed. Notice I didn't say that it's the side length times base, which is what it would be if it were a rectangle, right? Height and side length are the same. Here, when you, when you push over a rectangle and make it a parallelogram, the height is now this dimension right? The height is the 90 degree angle pathway from one base to the other, um, and it is not the side length here. So it's not B times A1, it's B times H. So sometimes that's going to take a little bit of figuring to try to determine what H is, and you might actually have to use some geometry to get to the measure of that length, but that's okay. Um, the, the height is what's important, not the slant length of that side. So it's still base times height. And you could imagine, to demonstrate this to yourself, imagine if this is where I drew the height, right? And then I take a pair of scissors and I cut along that dotted line. Now I have a trapezoid and a rectangle. Sorry, trapezoid and a triangle. If I take this triangle and I stick it over here, the area here is the same as the area here. And now I've created a rectangle that is B by H right? And then you can see in your brain, oh yeah, the area is base times height still, even though the height is not the same thing as the side length, okay? If you have questions about that, we'll talk about it in class. Let's look at this example. Here we have a parallelogram, and it's been drawn sideways for us so that we don't think that they're always laying down uh, horizontally. Um, and so this guy has a base of 25 inches, and a side length of 13 inches. But remember, it's not 13 times 25. The height of this guy is currently kind of sideways looking, but it is the 90 degree pathway from one base to the other, right? The 10 inch height here times the 25 inch base, 10 times 25 is 250 square inches. That would be the area of this parallelogram, all right? Again, if you have questions about this, we'll do a couple examples in class. The last shape I want to give you the area for in this first lecture is a triangle. The area of a triangle is one half times its base times its height. And um, I want to show you this in relationship to a rectangle. Remember, a rectangle is base times height. But if you take a rectangle and you draw a diagonal across it, now you have two triangles. Okay, And so those two triangles each have half the area that the rectangle that they came from used to have. So the area of that triangle is one half times the base times the height. It's half of the rectangle 
described by base times height. And you're like, yeah, but not all triangles are right angles. Well, now you can think about that triangle as half of a parallelogram. Interestingly, you can always make a parallelogram with two copies of the same triangle. No matter what triangle it is, if you took that same triangle, drew it again, drew a, a congruent triangle, you can arrange them so that they make a parallelogram. And the area of a parallelogram is base times height. So even if it's not a 90 degree triangle, if it's any kind of triangle, it is half of the parallelogram that would be um, base times height. So it's half the base times the height, right? So the area of a triangle is always half times base times height. And we'll do so many examples of this in your work coming up that you'll be doing these equations in your sleep, I promise. Let's do another example here. Here we have a triangle, x, y, z, and we're told its base length and we're told its area, but we're not told its height. So here you're supposed to determine the height based on the area and the base length. Remember, area is one half times base times height for a triangle. So if I've been told that the area is 54 square feet and that the uh, base is 12 feet, I can just solve for h. So 1 half times 12 times h, 6 times h equals 54, divide both sides by 6, and h equals 9 feet. So the height here is 9 feet. This is just a demonstration that you can use this formula frontwards or backwards, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's about all we have for 7.1. Um, hopefully these are things that don't scare you too much. You'll be doing a lot of things with area moving forward, so we get lots of practice with this. If you have any questions, let me know, and we'll deal with them in class tomorrow. You can put them in the comments field below, and I'll get to it as quickly as I can. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Have a good night.